Hello there, kids. It is I, Stray Cat, the one and only, coming to you with another episode of Stellaris Console Edition Redo. Alrighty, when we left off, we had, a uh, well, we had expanded our empire a little bit. Uh, we haven't found a planet that's worthwhile in the, uh, habitation department, but we might, uh, right here with this one in this general area of, uh, fuck, what's the name of it? I can't see it with the fucking thing on it. Maradetta. There we go. Fucking <laughs> can't see it when it's grayed out. Anyway, onward we go. And we have, you know, we have our science ships combing the nearby star systems while we're hoping that this is a good planet. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, he doesn't get there for a little bit. There we go. And... It's a decent planet. Ooh. Uh-oh. It's a pulsating stars thing. Jamal Al-Hazmi. As uh, we recall, it did net us a pretty decent... Uh, pretty decent star system that had a fuck ton of energy credits coming towards us uh, when it was Sir Nigel Pemberton the second so uh, yeah let's, let's get to the bottom of New this this time around all right and the sit rep there we go crack on the map where was the other star System reconnaissance completed. Uh, I guess it was in Kerbal. All right. Fair enough. Let's have him go to Kerbal real quick to finish that up. And then he can go this way again. I'm assuming it'll be like that. Down like that. Science division reports a new breakthrough. Hey! Eco simulation got completed. Fuck yeah. Beautiful. Alright, and what is one we can do from here? It's probably best if we start with planetary unification. Ancient warring tribes, historical nations in conflict, now united in empire. We must not, will not crumble and away we go construction complete yay and now have them working on the mining stations and research stations there system reconnaissance completed before you head back to the actually you know what do that and then that then build a starbase there so we can System then reconnaissance take control completed. of the planet. Which is a good idea. Good idea. Science division reports a new breakthrough. Got another one. Blue lasers. More powerful than red lasers, these blue variants emit electromagnetic radiation at a wavelength that appears blue or violet to most organics. Fair enough. Uh-oh, we have expanded just enough for it to start creeping up in cost. Back. Welp. That's unfortunate. Fusion power would be good, because having a stronger power source on our ships would be ideal. So we'll go that route. Nuclear fusion processes generate a great amount of power for ships, but without many of the risks associated with fission power. Beautiful. And... Oh, the fusion reactor just says the same fucking thing. Alright. <laughs> I noticed there was a second part to it. I was like, ooh, is this something that I should pay attention to? No, no. It's the same fucking... Little Taking evasive there. action. Uh oh! What we got here? Uh oh, space Science amigos. ship reports enemy contact. Get out there quick! 
Okay. Woo. Uh-oh. They didn't get out there quick. Anomaly found. Whoa. There are signs of activity by an ancient precursor civilization on this inhospitable rock. Sorry, I had to look at my phone real quick. Uh, saw a light and thought it was important. It's not. Anyway. Um, yeah, let's have a... Whoa, that's very hard. Oh, jeez. But uh, Gaston Pellissier is, I think, good enough to do that. So, yeah, we'll change scientist, actually. Um, let's see. He's the roamer. Jamal is in the middle of that. So after he's done with that, I guess. Yeah, we'll just... We'll just skip it for now. And we'll get Jamal looking at that later. In the meantime, we'll have to wait for uh, this one to come back. All right. And System reconnaissance completed. We'll send uh, the fleet over here to deal with those space amoebas. Enough unity for another thing. Well, what should we start with? I want to say expansion. I honestly want to say expansion. Yeah, let's do it. Go with expansion. Adopt. Our colony development speed will increase by 25%. Beautiful. Gotta love it. And that's the anomaly. Don't want to erase that accidentally. Hey, they're back. Beautiful. Um, hmm. I'll, uh, have them repair. There we go. Huh. As the ISS Trailblazers enters the Gehur system, something seems awry. The sun, previously registered as an ordinary dwarf star, appears to have shrunk, having lost mass at an alarming rate. The planets in the system ha have, as a result, recently entered ice ages. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Um, get out of there. Get out of there. Oh, yep, that's... That's what I thought it was. Here's hoping they get out quick. From deep within the star of the Gehur system emerges a gargantuan being, larger than a typical moon. Its body radiates heat, the same wavelength of energy as the one produced by the system's star. It's eating it! The creature feasts on sunspots, devours soul flares, solar flares, and we have interrupted its meal. The beast exudes light waves, rapid pulses at an, at an intense frequency, like a fluorescent roar. Taking evasive action. Get out, 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 get out. Oh no. Contact report. Leviathan. Jesus. Ah, oh, we're fucked. <laughs> we are fucked now. Oh boy. The Empire of Felinae has encountered something that is beyond sublime. Giant beings, their sheer existence a testament to the unfathomable wonders of the universe that make most life forms appear like flickering lights next to burning stars. Well, funny you mention stars. <laughs> it's something that eats stars. Despite the true nature of the Leviathan being unknown, people on Felon Day are hopefully in awe of what has been found and optimistic about what it may bring. But it is still a uh, beast and a half. Beast and a half that is going to suck. 
So, uh, we're gonna go the long route here. The longer route here, anyway. There we go, there's that, and there's that, and here's hoping there's no other big, nasty, evil thingies on its route there. Because, fuck, that thing could have easily taken out anything and everything. Oh! I now have the Eye for Talent trait. Through hard work and experience. That doesn't feel like hard work or any proper experience, but okay. Whatever you say. Okay. Continue on. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No, no. Don't go. Don't go yet. Don't go yet. Alright. Uh, crap. Okay. Might not have a choice. It's Inez Renard. Um, well, might as well explore this system. Fleet action so underway. Deals with that. Which, speak of the devil, looks like they are dealing with them now. All right. We're doing good so far. Doing good so far. Ha <laughs> ha! All right, beautiful. And then they can. Whoops, that's not what I meant. I meant for them to research after that and then finish surveying the system. All right, cool. And I'm going to limit the uh, number of ships again just because they don't need that many. But also, they're going to go back to upgrade. Because they all need an upgrade at this point. Now that the uh, lasers are there. Or uh, higher damage output sort of things than they used to be. All right. And then I'll have them... Reinforce. There we go. Anomaly found. Whoop. Say doodle. Oh. Oh no. This is the opposite of how that little bit will go. Hmm. Unfortunate. That is. The crew on. ISS Remembrance has made an unfortunate discovery. Like they suspected, the pulsating pattern observed from Kerbal was, in fact, due to a sensory malfunction in Science Officer Jamal Al-Hazmi's head. Science Officer Jamal Al-Hazmi has become delusional and is currently under the impression that he is the protector of the realm and that the stars are pulsating coded warnings about the coming apocalypse. The crew believes he himself manipulated the ship's sensory data during a psychotic spell. Jamal Al-Hasmi is now in a medical pod heading back for Felende, where he will receive treatment. Thank you for your service, Jamal Al-Hasmi, protector of the realm. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Oh boy, he's a fucking nut. Okay, Glowing webs of an unknown origin periodically illuminate the surface of Elthine 1A. Interesting. Well, they can't do much more with no, uh, no, uh, <laughs> no science leader. So I guess I gotta hire another one. Oh, great. I don't have one. I don't have one that will let me uh, do ancient civilizations faster. Joy! Okay. Alright. Almost spilled my drink trying to grab it. Alright. We're fucked. <laughs> I'm not... I'm going to push my chair back a little bit. Give me just a second. There we 
go. I thought I was a little too close to the microphone at first. And I'm probably still right. I'm probably still too close to the microphone. But, fuck it. Um, none of that's good. But I have no choice in the matter. Or at least not a lot of choice. Um, Rico Harada. Why not? You shall lead for now. see what they were replaced with. Ah! Fucking course. Science Division reports a new breakthrough. Alright. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Rico Hara. Your... Your tenure was short. But I needed a fucking archaeologist. I'm sorry. Alright, um, we will have them do that, and then get back to this. Oopsie doodle. There we go. Aha! 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 There we go. Just do this winding path. There we go. Better. Uh, oh, I just realized also... Ceramo metal materials. Finally completed. A combination of different metals and ceramics that result in a strong armor without sacrificing flexibility. Always good. Ooh, zero G refineries. The addition of internal refineries on mining stations will substantially increase mineral production. Alright, and a nebula refinery. By processing the dust clouds of a nebula, we are able to refine and extract valuable minerals. Sounds good to me. Can't complain about that. Construction complete. It's not very much. <laughs> At least I have no reason to complain. Alrighty. Ooh. Life Electric. Science Officer Gaston Pellissier reports that Ethelene, or Elthene, ugh, I keep wanting to read it the other way, Elthene 1A is covered pole to pole in a web like network of electrical impulses. These networks respond to external stimulus. The ISS Trailblazer experimented with sending a low-voltage pulse onto the surface, resulting in a wave of illumination that rippled through the network like a circuit board. Even more remarkable, the webs rearranged themselves. A secondary pulse revealed the filaments had organized into a new pattern, centered around where the previous pulse had contacted the surface of Elthene 1A. Gaston Pellissier concludes that the discovery has confirmed his long-held theory that life can exist almost purely as electrical impulses, independent of cellular or viral structure. This is also a subtle nod to a species that will be coming in a DLC later. Anywho, onward we go. And... They're all healed up. Ships refitted. And yeah, upgraded again. What do you mean reinforce fleet? There's nothing to reinforce. Oh, uh, that's ships refitted. That's why it said that. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, that's done. That's done. And that's done. Okay. Well, it's going to be done soon. Alrighty. So far, so good. And I'm not going to up the fleet any further because there's no way in hell they're going to be able to found. combat the stellar parasite thing. There's no way in hell. There's no way. That That's going to have to wait for a far, far flung into the future date. A large impact crater has been discovered that does not seem to be a natural occurrence. 
Interesting. Research it. Alrighty. And they're nearly done with Chohar. They just need to finish that anomaly and then the moon of Chohar 7. And then we're good. Here. There they go. Eventually we'll get that system in our control. Which will be nice. just have to wait. Wait for something else to pop up and surprise us. I think one of these planets was also possibly habitable, but not with that there. <laughs> Clearly. There is no way. There's no way we can make that work. At least not for the time being. Construction complete. Hey, beautiful. That means you can work on the mining station. That'll be right after that, because of course we will need that. Science Division reports a new breakthrough. Hey, it got done. Beautiful. Now, what do we move on to? Oh, I forgot that I had these being slowly built up. Um, hydroponics farming, biodiversity studies. It's probably best to have biodiversity studies under our belt, just so it increases the amount of research I get. Studying the different forms of life that appear on our world helps us better understand ourselves and the life that surrounds us. Onward we go. At a certain point, I might make another science ship. At a certain point. Depends on a lot of factors. A new metal on Chohar 7. That is extremely close to our home system. That is unusually close to our home system. Holy fuck! That is great. <laughs> Detailed surface scans of Chohar. I think that's Chohar, isn't it? My glasses fucking up on me? No, it's Chohar. Okay. Chohar 7 have identified a large impact crater containing the wreckage of several ancient starships of unknown design. The ships appear to be completely devoid of life support systems, leading us to suspect that they were either unusually large drones or controlled by some form of artificial intelligence. Interestingly, the hull of the ships were constructed out of living metal, an exceedingly rare and inorganic material with many unique properties. This metal can be programmed to assume a certain shape or form, and it will slowly regrow itself if damaged. Over a period of several millennia, the surviving metal from the wrecked ships was fused into a large and extremely dense deposit that could potentially be mined for centuries to come. Fascinating. System reconnaissance completed. That is so close to our home system. That is wildly close to our home system. System reconnaissance completed. The odds of that are basically slim to none. So that's fucking amazing. I love it. And we're gonna obviously put an outpost there. We're obviously gonna put a star base there. Why not? Why wouldn't we? It's basically begging for it. Alright, and it's gonna study the remains real quick. And that should enhance our uh, generative hull and amoeba breeding program. 
Battle debris secured. Yeah. Regenerative hull tissue and amoeba breeding program. Yep, I was correct. Plus 40 points in society research. <laughs> always, always necessary. All right. I might be correct in that I need another science ship. I'm kind of regretting having fired that... Uh, <laughs> having fired that scientist I hired a while back. But gives us a chance for another. Which speak of the devil and they shall appear. We got some good ones. Fritz Brinkman. You're an adaptable. Construction complete. Yeah, that's always good. Construction Ooh. complete. There are signs of activity by an ancient precursor civilization on this inhospitable rock. Research. And we shall also put Fritz Brinkman here. And have him working on this area. Go around here. And in this direction. That's a good idea. Leave that the way that is. Whoopsie doodle, I meant to go here. And have them do mining station and research station before heading home. System reconnaissance completed. I keep having them do that, and then I have to have them immediately come out and build another fucking starbase. But eventually, eventually they'll get rest. Just not right now. <laughs> Alrighty. I think I already got them set up on that. Okay. Meanwhile, I have... Oh, the planet doesn't have anything going on. Surprising. Uh, well, in that case, I'll have them building a city district because it looks like our housing units are getting low. Can't have that now. Alright. Arnav Kutti. Gone up a level. Good. Oh, hey! Just as I was thinking, there should be something special going on. Alright, and hollow theaters. Bring those in. And then... Hmm. Oh. Don't need to be <laughs> lowering that artificially. It's not anymore, I don't. Okay. Science Division reports a new breakthrough. Ooh, do you now? Can't wait to see it. Fusion power! Beautiful. Alright. And improved energy reactors, which is always good. But we're gonna go with automated exploration protocols, which will increase the survey speed. While we might not do the automatic exploration, the survey speed is always a good reason. Any way we can up that speed is always a good way to go. Science Division reports a new breakthrough. Ooh, already? And they're done there. And now they're gonna head home. Beautiful. Zero G refineries. Nice. Fusion missiles would be nice to have. I don't need geothermal fracking yet. So I guess fusion missiles it is. These updated space-to-space -space missiles have more powerful fusion warheads and improved flight performance. Beautiful. Can't complain about that development at all. Okay. And... How close are we? 17 months. And I don't need to do that. Need to have all the... Uh, Anomaly found. We can 
have at hand. A large amount of ship debris can be found in orbit around this moon. Possibly the remnants of some kind of massive fleet action. Research. Whoops, girl. Uh, oh, I've already completed that. The remains of a Hute cruiser have been found in orbit around Wist... Yeah, I was right. Wistrel 2A. It seems to have fallen victim to weapons fire, but given the extreme age of the Hulk, it is difficult to be certain. There is no indication that the ship was ever equipped with an FTL drive. It must have traveled between stars at sublight speeds. Jesus. All New right. sit rep. And derelict cruiser. Okay. System reconnaissance completed. Well, we'll have them uh, research that real quick. And then have them survey all of this shit. All of it. Anomaly found. Whoops. Unusual readings suggest there may be more to this desolate world than meets the eye. Well, research it! There we go. Go here. 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 And then go forward from there. Aha! We have our heading. Alright. That's done. That's done, that's done. Okay. They're all either working on a uh, research or they're working on a special project. Oh boy. It means I just gotta sit here and wait. Wahoo. <laughs> Primordial soup. Sounds disgusting. <laughs> because it is. Uh, nestled in sheltered pockets across Walmoro C 3A's. Wow, that's a mouthful. Surface is a rich sludge of simple organic com compounds. I was about to say components. That our researchers believe could be a hotbed for a biogenesis. Pretty sure I said that right. The spontaneous formation of organic life from lifeless matter. While Moro C3As, Jesus Christ, that's a mouthful, has an unusually thick atmosphere for a barren world, which could make it hospitable for simple life forms. Although this presents a unique opportunity to study what could be the early stages of the origin of life. It would be best to set our expectations low, as it may still be millions of years before life evolves naturally on Walmoro C3A, if at all. Fair enough. And that's something they'll uh, research at some point. Special project complete. Oh. I couldn't research it anymore if I tried anyway. I thought there was a way I could. I wasn't paying attention. Anyway, the archaeologist investigating the derelict Ute cruiser of Mbra... I was about to say a board, and then that didn't make sense. And then it tried to combine with above. And I'm stupid. <laughs> above Wistrel 2A have transmitted their report. There are two large cryo chambers in the cruiser's midsection designed to house one Ute each. In suspended animation. Given the massive size of Ute individuals, this was apparently their standard crew complement on vessels of this size. No Ute remains were found anywhere on the ship, but the archaeologist managed to recover logs from a computer that monitored the life signs and medical condition of the crew. It has provided valuable data on Ute physiology. Interesting find. Ooh. Sorry, I had to yawn a little bit. Didn't have enough coffee. Hmm. Huh. Another derelict, but uh, it's a colony ship. The partial remains of an ancient Ute starship has been found in orbit high 
in high orbit over Pentarum II. An initial analysis conducted by the ISS Remembrance, I can't believe I just butchered that word, indicate that the vessel may have served as a colony ship. Even cruiser-sized Ute ships were typically crewed by only one or two individuals, given the immense size of their bodies, but this hulk has more than a dozen cryopods attached, each containing withered exoskeletons from what must have been Ute colonists. Curious. New sit rep. No. Science you're division reports you're a new that breakthrough. You go. <laughs> you're researching that before you go. Absolutely. All right. And that's about as far as I'm going. I'm not making him do that whole fucking gamut again. Studying the different forms of life that appear on our world. Yeah, I already read this. I just realized that after I said that. Okay. Where are we now? Ground defense planning, food processing, off-world trade companies. Hmm. We don't have any trading to do yet. Food processing we don't need yet. I guess we'll go with ground defense planning. Why not? Gets that out of the way. And it's the cheapest one there anyway. So, win-win. Map the stars edict has expired, which means... Do it again! And we're good. Alrighty. And we are doing good so far. Although we haven't run into any aliens yet, which is mildly concerning system reconnaissance completed impressive structures litter Walmoro 3's surface practically begging for some archaeological work fair enough wow as an 8 Eight credit fucking system. I need to get my shit down there pronto. There we go. Get them started on the star base here, and then we can move them further down as time complete. goes on. Ah, the project is completed. Most of the remains of the derelict Ute colony ship that orbits P Pentarum, Pentarum Two, are in poor condition, but our IQ archaeologists fucking my ability to speak is degrading at a rapid pace <laughs> but our archaeologists managed to recover the vessel's sublight engines the ute never breached the light barrier depending instead on cryotechnology and thousand year long natural lifespans to spread their empire across the stars wow thousand years wow there is clear evidence that a massive space battle took place in close orbit of Tar Velum Velernum. I'm trying to read that properly. Yeah. There's a Velum. Tar Velum 2A. At some point in the last 5,000 years. The surface on one side of the moon is pockmarked with craters from stray weapons blasts, and scans from the ISS emissary have picked up several hulks on the ground. Though these wrecked ships are all in very poor condition, the fact that anything remains at all after the damage they must have sustained is a testament of their advanced design. Science officer Fritz Brinkman is preparing an expedition to sift through these derelict hulls for any valuable technologies. I New like the rep. sound of that. We shall do that. Not them. It wasn't them. It wasn't. Uh, it was Tarvellum. Okay. So it's here. Fair enough. Oh, Pulsar. Interesting. 
Not often you see that. Anyway, we'll have them research and then survey and then do their little lap about as I initially planned it. Beautiful. Oh! Edic Monolithic. While Morrow 3 is, an, is uninhabited, and indeed uninhabitable, but not unvisited. Its surface is littered with tall cenotaphs carved from some mineral not native to the planet, evidently placed here by some artistically inclined spacefaring race. Hmm. The monolith's flowing, monolith's flowing lines deftly chart a history so fantastical it must surely be fictional. Surely. Image them for the archives. All right. Enough unity for a new tradition. Uh, Starbase influence cost. That's something we can benefit from immediately. And that's something that barely helps at all. Uh, Starbase upkeep reduced by 20%. That will be nice. That will be nice indeed. All right, and uh, think about it. Uh, Construction complete. Make another generator district, because I had a feeling I would need it, and looks like I was right. System reconnaissance completed. All right. Barra system has been okay. All right. Anomaly found. And Teg... <laughs> I started with the wrong consonant there. Angetanar. Angetanar. I'm thinking that's how it's pronounced. I'm going with that. Scanners indicate the sandy dunes of Antegonar. And damn it, Angetanar. Damn it. Doug, damn it, damn it. Owner of the Dimsdale, damn it, damn it. Okay. Scanners indicate the sandy dunes of Agetanar, too, are almost entirely composed of granulate rare minerals. Mentals, rather. Ugh. Perhaps some valuable resources could be extracted from them. Here's hoping. Could the resource of being able to speak English be extracted from my head? Because that would be nice. Ha! Okay. They're big words. It's a lot of big words, so my brain can't do it well. That's the majority of the problem. Special project complete. team under Science Officer Fritz Brinkman has finished their expedition on Tar Valem 2A and returned to the ISS Emissary. Sadly, the wrecked ships on the surface were too badly damaged to recover any useful technologies. These vessels were clearly very advanced, however. We could gain valuable engineering insights if we analyze the way they were designed. We should gain... We could... We should consider the construction of a permanent science outpost in orbit. Wow, that actually helped reboot my fucking brain. Okay. Huh. The ISS Trailblazer crew is excited to report an unanticipated find on the surface of Ngetanar 2. Not only are the plentiful sand dudes on the planet composed of rare metal granulate. The sand itself is almost entirely composed of countless broken nanites. These microscopic machines are millions of years old. Their structure degraded far beyond any chance for reactivation. While we cannot determine a source of origin for these nanomachines, the society that created them must have been highly technologically advanced. Science officer ISS Trailblazer postulates that the nanites may have been used to terraform the surface of Agetanar II. 
millions of years ago. Damn. And I see Chor's compass here. The what? The what? And I don't get any... Oh, it's a trade league. Oh. It's a trade league. The caravan... <laughs> the caravan sorry caravan coalition? I might as well just call it the CCC, because that fucking name is terrible. Jesus. This government is a florm... A florm... This government is a form of plutocrat plutocratic oligarchy. Maybe I need to smack my head again to reset my fucking brain. <laughs> this government is a form of plu plutocratic oligarchy, where the state is made up of a myriad of free merchants, corporations, and guilds that have banded together in common commercial interests. Their fleet power, their economic power is both pathetic, but their technology level is overwhelmingly stronger than ours. Huh. There are trade league and free traders. Holds an election every 20 years to select a new ruler. Corporate governments are organized as a massive commercial enterprise that have, has completely supplanted the role of the state. Free traders. The trading fleets of this mega corporation are bolstered by semi independent free traders operating under license. Interesting. They're going to clash with us a little bit. They're pacifist and egalitarian. They're going to clash with us a little bit. Despicable neutrals. <laughs> what makes a species turn neutral? Lust for gold? Power? Or were they just born with their hearts full of neutrality? That's a Futurama reference. <laughs> it's a placeholder personality and should not show up in game. Well, it did. <laughs> but it's fine. It's fine. I find it hilarious. Welcome to Trade Station Tungle, the galaxy's premier leisure palace and home base of the Caravaneer fleets. Caravan Coins? Caravan Coins is a premium currency created by the Caravaneer Monetization Committee. What are they? Ensures full compatibility with the services ecosystem aboard Trade Station Tungle, including, but not limited to, the slots and reliquaries. But mostly just the slots and reliquaries. <laughs> Caravan coins are only accepted at the slots and for reliquaries. I have no coins, so there's no point doing that. Wow, those are spendy. Damn. I guess we'll uh, have something else in mind. Open a reliquary. The ancient reliquary rests on an opulent pedestal and must surely be filled with untold riches. I don't have that. So, what are they? It is an old story, but not a long one. When the caravans first came together and the CCC was established, it was decreed that a small random portion of goods passing through this station every year was to be seized placed in hermetically sealed containers and stored in a cargo bay on the lowest level of the station. This custom has been upheld since time immemorial, and the cargo bay recently filled up. It is now our duty to sell these sealed reliquaries. What's inside? We are prohibited from knowing. That knowledge is for the buyer. What we do know is that the contents were considered valuable at some point in Caravaneer history. Though there is also some evidence that the reliquary containers may have been used for garbage disposal during the brief third reign of the lunatic broker. Good to know. Alright, well, we are over time. Or at least over time for this episode. So, I'm going to end this episode here for right now. 
Thank you all so much for watching. Click the subscribe button if you like these videos and you want to see more. And click the like button if you like this particular video. And share in comments so we can bring more people into this community. We can talk about the games we're playing together. And I will see you all in the next episode. This has been the one and the only Stray Cat. Playing games and running across a leviathan. That will definitely kill my entire fleet if I even tried to fight it. So I'm definitely not going to fucking do that. Uh, that is over here. And it is big and scary. It's going to eat a fucking star. And, uh, we found intelligent life. It's commercialized capitalism, but it's intelligent life because it's able to do that, I guess. And then uh, we're just expanding our empire as much as we can and dealing with that as much as we can. It's going to be a slow process. Eventually we'll get there for you.